Well, hello, everybody. Um, thanks for coming back after our little holiday hiatus. And then January was just like, ah, boom. So um, welcome to the Skyscapito Appreciation Society. So um, I'm Roseanne Hansen and um, Beth Ann Burton I'm joined from Australia. Yay. And Deborah Khan from California. We kind of informally host this. Um, so let's take a quick poll, raise your hand if you know how to use that. Well, let's see, how do we want to do it? You don't just want to like do physical hands or want to see who's new. So if anyone is brand new, Monica, okay. Um, if I can't see you, like put in the chat or something, D's new. Oh, there's some new people. Okay. Do, you, do you mean new to um, this? This little I group, heard? yeah. This oh, okay, group. yeah, then I am. Great. Well, then That's we're going to, so Deborah um, suggested we do a, um, a quick kind of say how we all got started. It's Bethan's fault. No. <laughs> Bethan, do you want to, do you want to say kind of how we started? Yeah, so um, I did a presentation for, I've always been a little crazy about making skies in my nature journal. I feel like they just um, are a great way to capture um, the mood of the day and something about the landscape where you are. And so I was invited, I was so thrilled to be invited to speak uh, again at the World, uh, the Wild Wonder Nature Journaling Conference. And I thought that it would be fun to do uh, skyscapes. And so because of John Muir Laws' beautiful little word, landscapito, which means like a landscape that's really manageable and small, um, I decided to call that workshop Skyscapitos. And so then after that, we had um, just so much love for Skyscapitos that um, we were talking about doing a meetup. And then Roseanne decided Sky Scapito Appreciation Society was a lovely sort of catchy title. And then, and here we are. So we started off and it was just um, so uh, well received. We had heaps of people at that first meeting and it just seems like skyscapes are a really fun, manageable thing to add to our journal. So th this is just a group of people who love doing that. And it's very informal. It's not a class. It's just, as, as the title says, an appreciation society. So we just get together and chat about um, about that different aspects. We've done lots of different um, different ways of capturing skies in, in the we workshop. We kind of do themes, um, exactly themes. Yeah. So and the Deborah's going to talk about how we share those. So. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Deborah. Would you like to do that? Oh, I'm sorry. Say that again. Um, my my internet's cutting in and out a little uh -oh. bit. Uh oh. Uh oh. I know. So um, you're ready for me to talk about how we should like how we have shared in the past what we do oh. and how we're going to ask people to share oh, okay. um, what, what we're doing today so that we don't have like a, a mile long chat that you can't find anything in. Yes. Well, we uh, have shared things, of course, at the various Zoom meetings that we've had. And then Roseanne set up a Padlet page. And I don't know if you are familiar with that, uh, but I'm going to, uh, let's see. Oh, shoot. How do I get? Uh, do you want me to drop it in the chat for you? Yeah, I was trying to get it in there and it's, it's not. I'll get it. Okay. All right. There we go. Did it get there? I'm getting it right here. Right. So this is the web address um, for the main Padlet. And um, yes, there we go. It's a, it's a really easy to use sharing platform. Um, if you don't log in and have a username, you'll just be anonymous. But if you, if you get a username, you can have your name. Um, if you just want to be anonymous, be sure just to write your name on your post so it's it shows so you can see there how how that works excellent can you see the page yes okay good all right and as you can see there's a topic on each of the headings for each column and then um what roseanne has been doing is adding one for each of our weeks so um 
this is where we've also been sharing. And um, during this, the sessions, people have shared a lot of resources, uh, whether it's books or web pages or types of pens or things like that. And we were thinking it would be really nice to have a column here that was just resources. For example, and this says anonymous, so I'm not sh sure who shared it, but they shared this resource about skies. And um, uh, so that could be one thing that we could put in that column. And it, there it goes, finally. Um, so Ooh. we're looking for somebody who could uh, go through uh, Padlet and glean uh, different resources. And then also uh, our um, uh, 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 chats, that's where they're at, <laughs> uh, from the various sessions. So is there anybody that would be interested in, in doing that and helping us out here? And uh... For today's session, just to be our kind of to, to gather if anyone puts anything in the chat or says, you know, oh, I love this or, or whatever. Exactly. You can put it into the Padlet under the new heading I have there for today's. That would be fantastic. Um, OK. Anyone? Is there anyone that would be interested in, in oh, helping be our gleaner? Yeah, volunteering. No. no. Okay. No, well, no. we'll do our best. Um, oh, wait, we'll I saw a hand there. Oh, Valerie yeah. raised her hand. Oh, that would be great, Valerie, if you could do that. Thank you so much. And and Lynn can help too. So we've got a couple of people. Um, how would how would we like to do that? So, um, go ahead and unmute Valerie and Lynn. Okay. Here I am. Well, maybe if one does a chat, does the chat monitors the chat, excuse me, okay. and one monitors the, the conversation. Okay, perfect. Um, you guys decide who wants to do which. That would be awesome. I don't, I don't, I don't care, but I have to tell you, I'm going to need some help getting this onto Padlet. Okay. <laughs> Just put it on a, a, you know, a Word document Word for now, document. and then we can, <clears throat> can help I can you do with that. that. And then Lynn, if you want to do, let's see. Why don't you do verbal? Um, oh, okay. So I'll follow the chat. Perfect. I'll, I'll see what guys. I can do. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So and that's... then I put one more resource in the chat here. Um, this is where I keep all the recordings, and Padlet also shows up on here embedded. This is a web page where we host all our skyscape videos. Someone's asking. Um, when I'm going to post the last video, I completely forgot to post it, so I will try to do that soon. Um, I sort of had a lot going on in December. But then's got a good a good excuse, don't you? Yes, <laughs> She's just published a book. She's going to share that with us in just a second. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, outstanding. We really appreciate that, and um, I think this has been said many times, but we see this as our group as a total group not just the three of us so we really are encouraging as much participation and your ideas and thoughts um absolutely uh, on the way and um i'm going to give just a brief uh a little bit more of an introduction myself and um is that i'm i consider myself still a newbie in the nature journaling world it's actually been just one year, a little, maybe 13 months since I started. And I wanted to let those of you that are new to nature journaling know that uh, just to encourage you to uh, participate and don't feel shy because you're new. I started out for months just using a pencil and nothing else. I was too afraid to make the next step. Uh, finally, with encouragement with pe from people like Bethan, Bethan and Roseanne and a few others, I finally got myself a pen. And now I'm doing my work in pen first. And um, I'm also just now beginning to use watercolors. I did go through a phase of using colored pencils and I certainly see a place for them. So um, don't feel intimidated. Uh, we're all here to learn from each other. And uh, 
this is such a wonderful community. Everybody is so supportive and, and encouraging. So yes, that's my update. I'll, I'll second that, that I think um, part of all of our professional development, professional or, or, or your practice development, sharing is really important and it's scary, but um, doing it is, is it helps you get over that hump of, you know, just, you know how hawks mantle their food, you know, you want to mantle what you're doing, you know, you, you want to cover it and say, no, I don't want anyone to see it. <laughs> but it's very empowering to share. So that said, Bethan, do you want to give an update on what, yeah. what you've Deborah, been maybe you could stop sharing your screen so oh, we can yeah. see. Yeah, thank you. Oh, um, I didn't realize I was still sharing. Uh-oh, I'm not sure what you're even seeing. Did We're I just have... seeing your Padlet. I can, oh. I can do it for you. Oh, thank you. There we go. Perfect. Thanks. That was perfect. Yes. Thank you, Deborah. Yeah, that's so important just to jump in, just to know that it's something that's supposed to be joyful, that it's something uh, for you, not for presentation of your journal to anyone else. Um, so my name's Bethan. I'm a nature journal, nature journaler, nature journal teacher. That's my job now, which is such a joy. Um, I have a podcast all about nature journaling. And this Monday, I'm uh, interviewing, I'm uh, releasing the podcast which is with Ray, uh, Rosalie Hazlett who's this amazing oh, nature journal teacher who's just published a book as well um, and um, I also have uh, for the last two years run um, International Nature Journaling Week and that's coming up again first to the 7th of June hey. and uh, it's it's just a celebration it's just um, an idea to bring people together at the same time to celebrate nature journaling and we're going to have a whole lot of international teachers this year um, speaking uh, teaching in other languages which will then be translated oh. into English um, so that's that's my big news. I'm also starting up uh, something called Creative Play for Nature Journalists because I think we all get hung up on this um, on this idea of making pretty pictures and it's really hard to get out of that. So it's going to be a YouTube series that can be joined live and it's just going to be um, play, exactly that, creative play. And I am a little stuck on the technology, but I'm going to force myself to learn this new it's this new thing that I haven't learned yet but I'm going to force myself to do it this month and I'd love to uh, have you there along with me for that creative play for nature journalists fantastic so we can get on if you're if you're on Bethan's mailing list put yes. your website on in the chat please Bethan that would be lovely thanks Roseanne we want to hear about your book now yeah, so <laughs> the reason I didn't get the recording done in December or it's done I just haven't posted it um, is yeah I was finishing up a new book which came out um, I finished it in January and then it just came out and thank you all to everyone who, who ordered it it's called Master of Field Arts and it has you know a, a meteorology in it so I've been doing a lot more skies and clouds too but also just identifying the clouds and um, I'm more on the Nate kind of nerd science side for a lot of it um, for me journaling is about learning and observing and the pretty, I agree with Beth and, you know, it's not, not creating studio art, I'm, I'm learning. So um, that said, let me, uh, two quick updates on some dates you guys wanna mark in your calendars because we haven't seen each other in a while. Um, coming up in June, the second um, Northern Rockies Nature Journaling Conference in Hamilton, Montana, which is south of Missoula. Um, Valerie Bear is here today. She's the organizer and I'm going to be speaking at the conference. So it'll be a wonderful way for like our, probably our first biggish gathering, you know, in person since COVID. So wow. yay. Um, so that is June 24th to 26th um, in, in Montana, which is a beautiful time to be there. And then Wild Wonder uh, online. Um, September 15th to 18th. And again, so that's a really affordable way to also um, see a ton of great, great people. So, okay, well, that's enough updates. Do you want me, I can just, since I didn't do as much homework as I should have, I'll just share what kind of my yeah, today's theme is, is, you know, our favorite historical um, cloud people, like, you know, painters or draw sketchers, or as, as I said, for me, um, really into the science behind it. So for me, um, Luke Howard, 
and I write about him in my book, that's how I kind of discovered it, um, is the person who in, invented the nomenclature for what we call clouds today. So using that um, a binomial system, just like we use with um, species and genus, or genus and species, he's the one who came up with, you know, cumulus and nimbus and then cumulonimbus or, you know, and, and all the different ways we combine them. So I thought that was super cool. Plus here, I'll share my screen. He was, he started as they did during the, the 19th century, 18th century, everyone had a real classical education. Of course, those who were lucky enough to go to, to, go to school, now let's see, share screen. And so he started very young, keeping a journal. Um, let's see, I think I'm just gonna do shared desktop because that's a little bit more, um, I can show more. So here's, wow. So this is from this was Luke How one of Luke Howard's watercolors and um, I thought he was he I love his style I love the expressiveness of um, what he how he captured the skies obviously he he was really in disguise um, and here's here's another one so he was obviously studying skies but look he's got a real um, style here where he puts something in the foreground which I really like and gives that depth of the background. And he really got that light really well. Um, I loved that. And I've been working a lot more on, on skies, thanks to the Skyscape Ito Appreciation Society. And um, to that end, I was like, I feel like I'm, I can be a lot quicker now at, at doing my skies. I was, here's an example of one I feel like I did this fall where I captured a, a complex sky really, really quickly. I was pretty happy with it. I didn't used to be happy with skies at all, um, but I've, I've stopped being afraid of them and I'm, I'm feeling like I'm getting the textures a little bit better. So this is kind of my Luke howard -y moment. <laughs> I love, Roseanne, how that um, sort of tumbles out of the box. So you've got the box containing, oh. <laughs> then it tumbles out at the front. I love that. It's really, really cool. I've been doing that a lot more with, with my landscape eaters and skyscapes um, where I let them kind of, yeah, ooze out or trickle out. Um, That's really that, cool. That it's interesting that you said that you, that you picked out Luke Howard, because when I saw his work just there, I'm not, I wasn't familiar with it, but when I saw it, I thought, Oh, that looks like Roseanne's work. It's interesting oh. that yeah. <laughs> it's, it's because I've been yeah, we really. Although this is not so, this book is fabulous. It's about Luke Howard, but I was disappointed in the the. the I didn't. The reproduction of the the images is really bad. It's, there's no color inside, um, mm -mm. and and this is Constable. This is not Luke Howard. <laughs> So I was like, why didn't they put Luke Howard on a book about Luke yeah, Howard? That's but anyway, interesting choice. <laughs> um, but that's a, in fact, you can't even see the sky really. And this is kind of weird, but um, I mean, it's, this is about the landscape where I feel like Luke Howard's were about skies. So mm -hmm. anyway, little critique there. Uh, thank you so. for sharing that. It's really wonderful that just like you just, uh, just doing it. And I mean, that's what nature journaling is all about, but just doing it makes you feel comfortable. And then you, yeah, you, you gotta keep look. doing it. Like Jack says, it's those miles putting in. So if, if those are, so let's start lining up people who have something to share. Um, put use raise your hand, which is down in reactions, down in the bottom. Click reactions and raise hand, and that'll pop you up so we can see who to call on. Um, Roseanne, I've got a little. Um, a and then you, of you're gonna to do share. yours too, Bethan. Yeah, should I do that now? Yeah, or should I get I... Let me get off the stage here. <laughs> I love that. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'll share my screen. I've just got a couple of folks very well known that but that I love. And I'm um, just closing some stuff here. Um, <laughs> I never forgot to do that too. <laughs> um, Ooh. John Constable, he is very famous for having done lots of skies, but I just love this one. It's really atmospheric and um, he's got some really cool quotes and I've written them here. Constable described the sky as the chief organ of sentiment in a landscape. And I just Ooh. thought that was really like juicy way to describe it. Like the sky is what makes, what makes the landscape super interesting. 
And um, he also wrote, painting is but another word for feeling, which I thought was very, very romantic. Um, so that's a bigger, Bethan. Yeah, let me see if I can. Whoa, I just <laughs> learned it. That was weird. <laughs> that's not what you wanted me to do. Yeah, let's see if I can make them bigger. Nope, I can't. Um, <laughs> I think if you if you um, if you pinch pinch it and move your fingers out, it might grow. Um, mm. No. 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 Mm -mm. Sorry, <laughs> I can post Sorry. this on Padlet though. Okay. And, um, below that is uh, J M W Turner, who's also very very famous for um, atmospheric um, skyscapes and really diffuse and luminous use of um, skies. And I have a real soft spot for Turner because when I was eighteen, nineteen, I went to Europe and saw you know the the famous painters in galleries and this was uh, Turner was one of the ones that I saw in when I was living in London and so it was one of those real like first encounter with really incredible art so Turner is always one that I think of when I think of skies but I'll post this um I'll post this on Padlet but atmospheric in the Turner is amazing yeah and, I love um, it. I love that would it. be fun to practice um and probably deceptively pretty difficult yes I'm sure yeah <laughs> all right I'd love to we'd love to hear from other people yeah, yeah, let's see. I think we have we have five people raised hands so Deborah is next I think um to share so let me Deborah let me put you on spotlight and Bethan, remove there we go okay and, and we've got seven people whoops um hold on i'm there we go <laughs> Jeez, louise <laughs> okay whoops there we go okay this is in fact i want to show uh wow. um, the picture first this was in my grandparents house uh when i was a little girl and and i'm 70 so this is uh when i uh, 60 years ago, and I was always mesmerized by this painting. Well, when my grandmother died, or well, actually, both grandparents were gone, my sister asked if she could have this painting, and, and this is it in her, her house right now. Um, and so I did some research. Uh, it was signed by John Pike. It's not an original, it's a copy. And um, uh, so I learned that he was born in 1911, and uh, in the 1930s, he spent five years in Jamaica, and he did all sorts of things, uh, painting uh, watercolors like this, and most of them have just luscious skies that really evoke a lot of emotion. And um, he, but he also did things like advertisements for rum and uh, murals on walls and, and just a wide variety of things. Uh, eventually, I mean, he traveled all over the world um, and eventually he settled back in Woodstock in New York um, and which where he was from. And he um, took up teaching others in, in addition to paintings himself and he took people on field trips around the world and um, he called them painting holidays and uh, it was so neat I mean this is like just I was so excited about this and what he also was was a teacher and I don't want to unshare my screen how do I do that uh, uh, I can do it for you no thank way. you I appreciate that and then now you can hold that up perfect yeah so here's his uh, one of his books and he writes it in first person and he tells exactly how he does the paintings and lo and behold um my picture my picture the the picture oh, was in here and i'm just going to tell one more interesting thing he suggested this is wet on wet and he describes how he does all of the paintings but he suggests doing it upside down so that the flow uh, of the the pigment um, goes away from you. So when you put your brush down, it goes away uh, rather than towards you. So that was his. Oh, that was 
the technique I picked up from there. So I've been piddling around with it, but I really uh, haven't um, uh, done an actual painting. Yeah, yeah, it painting. looks like um, there. I love the way it looked like he he put a, a background of probably like, like a yellow ochre and then um, yeah. that really improves the contrast. And and then the way the the wet and wet, everything went and, and exactly lovely. So, so fantastic. Deborah um, Mary's asking, can you hold the book up again just so that we can see? Uh oh, her internet went um, wonky. Oh, oh, we just lost her. Um, it was John Pike, correct? Um, and oh, just called watercolor. And I think one of our um, we'll we'll be gathering that to put in the Padlet um, information. So we'll have that. So let me do um, Lisa Portwood next. Um, let me, I'm going to spotlight you and then, great. All right, All right. Um, let me see if I can share my screen. Oh, I will need to, um, I will need to uh, back. Or not. If not, I can. No, I, I can. I just need to, uh, I have to find you uh, again on the participants so that I can have you share. So um, I did. I did print out my picture also. Oh, okay. Here, let me let me see. Um, hold on. I'm. This is odd. It's it's behaving oddly. So, I can't find you on the list. It's Lisa, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's real. Oh, there you are. Okay. Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> there we go. You should be able to share now. All right. Um... Hang on. Now it's up to me to master the technology. <laughs> Your share screen is down at the bottom, the green green button, and then you can pick either the program that has the photo in it or just do share your desktop. Okay. Let's go here. So this was the one that I chose. Can you see that? Yeah, the uh, Ohio River by... Yeah, okay. this one is the Ohio River and it's by Frank... Um, Harmon Myers, and he was actually born in Cleves, Ohio, which is very close to where this bend in this river is, um, because I've, I've driven by this in real life. But I chose this because it has a couple different kinds of clouds represented in it. Um, you've got these clouds up here, which are the cumulus clouds, but then there's also the homogeneous cumulus clouds, which are the, the man-made clouds. Yay, I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, I love that word. <laughs> I know, isn't it a fun word? Yep. Um, so yeah, so we've got, you know, the ones here from what looks like industry, but then also here from the steamboat. Nice. So that's what, what attracted me to this and the local connection, because I'm um, up in Oxford, Ohio, which is about, mm, about 30 minutes north uh huh. About an hour north of the river. So, to just like the pike, I'm seeing in there a lot, a, a number of different colors of blue in the sky, and both cool and warm, um, wow. which gives it that feeling of, you know, being a depth and and. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I I, I like that one too. And then let me stop share. And then I decided to, to accept your challenge. Yay! Oh, good. To, to do my own drawing, which is in the landscape veto. Yay! Oh my goodness. Style. Can you hold it a little closer? And now up a tiny bit. There we go. Wow, well done. So yeah. And and what so tell us a little bit about your technique for how you got those clouds um, in there and what what watercolors you use, does that go wash? Um, so this picture is actually the, the print off from the website. And oh, then, I see, there you go, the, there you go. Yeah, the pencil drawing. I had you pull it up too high. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Nicely done. So tell us about your, your process for, for doing that. So and are I, you going to color it? Yes, I think I will color it. Um, and I just used a Pigma pen. This is an 005. Uh huh. And just, I started with the box because I, I took your, um, the little landscape workshop with you. So I started with 
the frame box and then um, kind of did the horizon line and then filled in just rough, like the, the, the river bend and like the main things and then just sort of hit it. So it's not truly accurate, but it gets the feel of it. It does. Well, well done. And you'll have to put on the Padlet if, if you if you jump into the watercolor and, and do that too, and then tell us, you know, what your challenges were to capture. I, I should think it would be very uh, challenging to uh, reserve the spaces for those um, anth anthro clouds, the, uh, the anthro, it was an anthro, right? Anthro cumulus. Um, yeah. Because, you know, you, you've got, you want it to look like it's coming up and out, but reserving that fluffy space. That's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Let me remove, um, let's see, remove spotlight and lower your hand. And next we'll do Susan Wallace. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so Sus Susan or Suzanne? Can you hear me? Yes. Is it uh, Susan or Suzanne? Whichever you would like. Oh. Most, people, most people call me Captain Suze, actually. Oh, awesome. <laughs> um, let me see what, what I'm doing here. Okay. Are you going to need to share your screen? Okay, share screen. Okay, I need to uh, like put, put that on your thing. Okay, now you can. Can you? You should be oh, able to oh. now. Oh, everything. Oh, there it is. Okay, I've got two screens going here. Okay. Can you see my screen? Not yet. So um, if you go down to the bottom and hit share screen. Right. And then choose if you want to if you want to share your desktop or a particular app, whichever works. There's multiple participants. Uh, no, um, it, it's a green box that says share screen. Right yeah. in the middle. And it should open a window that says basic and they'll say desktop, whiteboard, there you go. Oh, there we go. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Great, no worries. All right. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, I'm excited because um, I, it, it's always been a sideways interest for me. Um, and the person that I wanna share is a long time favorite of mine since forever, I think. This is N.C. Wyeth. Oh, and yeah. I'm an illustrator, and so I absolutely love N.C. Wyeth. I've been to um, Chad's Ford. I've been to his studio. I've been uh, up to Brandywine. I've been up New England to see uh, anywhere he's at. I've gone there um, because I just love his illustrations, and he has such unusual skies. And it's interesting that sometimes I live here in North Carolina and here on the coast, we have some quite dramatic uh, sunsets and cloud formations that come through here. And whenever we get one of those huge cumulus cloud formations that's going up and a storm's imminent, I always say, yep, there's an NC Wyeth sky. <laughs> nice, I completely, with you, I just think he was magic. Now, I'm just gonna go through a couple of them here. Here's another oh, one. Oh, wow. oh my gosh. I mean, he was just, I mean, he's an illustrator. So illustrators are always about, you know, finding solutions to whatever their assignment is. Um, and so he has such a variety of different types of skies, but his murals are just amazing. And so, it was hard for me to find one that I really liked. And so I went to this one, which is actually a Coca-Cola ad. And, but this sky is just so typical of NC Wyeth with all those colors and these beautiful, you know, growing uh, cloud formations that usually mean a storm is coming. <laughs> I'm very familiar with those. Um, so this was my experimentation with uh, painting oh. after N.C. Wyeth. I'm going to uh, remove your screen share shirt so that we can see you. Okay. There we go. There we go. Oh, wow. Oh, how fun. <laughs> oh my God. So I went out after N.C. Wyeth today. 
That's that fantastic. Fabulous. I don't think I've the quite done it yet, but I have a feeling I'm going to go get some gouache. And I mm -hmm. think that uh, with the gouache, I'll have better ability to mix the clouds. It uh, sure what, looked like he is kind of hard. It is. Oh, I think they're super challenging. So it looked like he and maybe you used looked like ultramarine was was the top color. I think that had that texture, which which I yeah yeah. You know. I was using um, Derwent's uh -huh. colors, which are pretty intense. Um, nice. So just trying to get them in there, but I definitely need to go get some uh, more gouache. Well done. Thank white you. White highlights to come back in. Yeah. Rizan, have you done um, gouache, skies in gouache before? No, I haven't. Oh, well, yes, once. I did um, I did a, a cloud chart on toned paper using only white, well, white, and then I mixed, um, I mixed blue gouache with burnt sienna gouache to get a gray, and then I, I added the, the shadows. So, yeah, it, it, it was a fun way to do it. I haven't done it before, but it, I'm interested to try. Try it on toned paper. It's fun. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susanna. Thank that you. was amazing. Yes, That's beautiful. Um, I'm, let's see, lower hand. And how about Monica? Let's bring you up. Yay. Thank you again, Susan. Let's see. Um, spotlight. And Monica, are you going to want to share your screen or are you just holding up? I could hold it up, but I guess okay. I can share, I suppose. Okay, then I will oh. give you the share permission, which I need to, to do okay. manually here. Make co-host. Okay, there you go. There. Do you see a, a blue one? Yeah, and oh, that's nice. Yeah, that shows it really well. Oh, wow. So that's uh, Lauren Harris, and he's probably the most famous of the Canadian group of seven, if you've heard of those artists. Yes. The, they went out to the wilderness in Canada and then they painted in their studios, pretty successful. And like in the 1910s through 30s or 40s. And I love Lauren Harris's stuff. And he, he does these lenticular clouds. That I just think are amazing. And, um, wow, you can just tell that's the high Arctic. That's Baffin Island. Yeah. Yeah. And I live in Anchorage, Alaska. So I, I like the Northern mountains and clouds and stuff. Nice. Though those, those are, so, I love this lenticular. The light yeah, is interesting on them, on that one. The light is coming from multiple directions. I find that interesting, so. Yeah, well, he's definitely was kind of, took liberties with, you know, making things the way he wanted them to look. Uh-huh, nice. Um, I, let's see, do you have more to share or do you No, I just picked that okay. one actually, so. Okay, I'm going to stop your screen share. Wonderful. Um, anything great. else to to add? Oh no, not really. Okay, great. That was that was wonderful. Loved that. Um, what Very was powerful. the title of that one again? It is called North Shore Baffin Island. Yeah, I'm going to look look him up because um, yeah, I'm I'm we're very interested now in Alaska for a lot of reasons. So. Okay, thank you so much, right. um, Let me do a little. Uh, uh, Valerie, are you able to share? I don't see your video on. Let's see. There. Okay, I, I turned it on. I'm on an iPad. I tried oh, putting okay. things into the Padlet. I'm not sure if I could could share them. I could try. Um, and I just found another one, um, I sort of got into trying to find memorable things that I have yeah. seen in the past. So, uh, the one that I just found is something I saw at the Metropolitan Museum of Art is by Giovanni Di Paolo Di Grazia. Um, I will try to put that into the Padlet, um, but he did, um, a painting um where it's encircled in a rainbow so it's it's kind of it's a it's a religious painting but it and it you know takes some fanciful liberties with the skies but i thought that was really interesting what he did i mean um other artists i 
found who depicted skies in really interesting ways were John Constable. And I know he's been mentioned before, but what I put in the Padlet was his painting of Stonehenge. Oh, wow. Well, I'm, I'm looking at Padlet now and I'm not and seeing it. One of the, um, probably, it's it's got to be among the world's most famous watercolor paintings. Um, um, does anyone see it on Padlet? I, I'm not seeing I, it. Valerie? I tried to, um, I'll try again. I was doing it on my phone and having a lot of difficulty. Yeah, how about just dropping it into the chat? With an um, iPad, I don't know how exactly how to do it, so. Yeah, I tried putting it in the Padlet later on my iPad. Yeah, why don't, so. why don't we do that? Oh, wait, I see the Stonehenge now. Okay, I got it, I got it. Okay, I'm gonna put a link. Um, oops, no. Okay. Another artist I mean because his sky is so dramatic and it's really amazing what he did with watercolor um another artist who's it definitely doesn't quite fit the definition of sky scapito because her work in this series was so monumental was Georgia O'Keeffe did her uh -huh. series above the heads, which were enormous mural size paintings like gigantic paintings her, her largest paintings ever um, that she did in her 70s after flying in an airplane for the first time in her life um, back in the I remember 1960s. those. Those are amazing. And sort of semi-abstract, um, but it kind of got me thinking of how sometimes tiny works of art can appear monumental and giant works of art can appear deceptively simple. Uh, well said. Here, let me share. I'm going to share my screen because I've got the constable up and it's it's really weird. yeah what I mean there. better than me, me after there we go having oh wow <laughs> oh my so, gosh think, look at Another. the energy so much dynamism there it's really cool you guys Very, see yeah, it did a lot of um lifting and such uh-huh after applying the paint like it looks like this streaks were probably scrubbed and lifted mm -hmm. so he used a bunch of different techniques and he was just one of the great masters of watercolor yeah look at the rabbit running to the left but, oh no, my God. i don't think we noticed yeah. a rabbit before <laughs> what wow. a whimsical uh, fun thing to just do huh love it fantastic well thank you for sharing those very powerful so so my other one additional was Yoko Ono, I am not joking, did a um, installation of televisions with images of skies, which was inspired by a time she lived in an apartment with no windows. Well, I don't know why she would do that, but um, this was done in museums and it was a bank of TVs with images of skies from different wow. places. Yeah. Fantastic. So that's kind of like, you know, kind of weird, but pretty interesting. Very cool. I love all these. I love all these, the way everyone's, you know, sharing and thinking. Thank you, Valerie. Um, let's also, see. I oh, wanted to we have one more mention, mention Winslow Homer and John Singer Sargent. Yes. Um, don't want those guys to be from. And Emily Carr. I, <laughs> I Great. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, okay, so Carol is up next. Hi, Carol. Hi. Are you going to screen share? Do I want I can I can do the screen share. Okay, great. Let me pop you up there. Let's see. Ready? Okay, there you should be able to now. All right. Let me hang on. This is just wonderful seeing all the different artists and what inspires each of us. Ooh, oh, look at that. This is completely different than anything else. Ooh. Okay, so um, the best way I could start is I thought I was walking into the shallow end of the pool. We've talked about uh, JWM, 
wait a minute, J.M.W. Turner. And I was ended up in the deep end. <laughs> so, so I got this article, which is very interesting. And it is, a, you will love this, um, uh, Roseanne. It's all on technical aspects of how weather affects paintings, how they can tell weather by analyzing the paint in the paintings. It's the red green ratio. Oh, so my this, God. this one is Turner's painting. I'm going to say it probably has um, probably more pink in it, but Turner was notorious to use uh, paints like the lake paints that would fade. What do they call that? It, it, I, I had it it's in fugitive. my head. Fugitive. 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 He worked with uh, Wins Win Windsor Newton, but he was very not headed. So Windsor Newton tried their best to s keep him away from that because his paintings were disintegrating. Even in his time, they were disintegrating in color. So I would assume everything you see from Turner would be even that much more vibrant because of the color issue. So here's, fascinating? here's what I found out. So between 1200 and 2000, they analyzed volcano eruptions, which were about 54 at the time. And they found out that during the um, Turner's time, there was a volcano that erupted. And this affected, that's why his paintings, he painted what he saw. He didn't paint what he wanted to see, he painted what he saw. They believe that the red during volcanic, it, it lasts about three to five years. And during volcanic eruptions, wherever the volcanic dust goes, changes the painter's painting from um, the red green ratio. So your skies are more red during the years after volcanic uh, oh, eruption. How cool. Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. So that was one thing. And then I started on, if you notice with this picture, um, Turner also had some really unique um, techniques. So one of the things, if you can notice in the clouds, he would actually use his fingers to pull the paint. So if you use tissue, it would bring it all the way to white. But if you used your fingers, it would give a little bit of gradation, but it would it would still hold the color, give you a tonal. Um, so Why? he used his he used his fingers. He also used blotting techniques to increase the color intensity. So he blotted with bread. And the reason why they know this is many of his paintings, because they disintegrate so quickly, they've done a lot of analysis on them, and they actually found breadcrumbs to pick up the uh, color. Oh my God. He, he also used scraping techniques. And someone had mentioned, I forgot their name, about using the wet and wet technique. He was the second person to use this very effectively in his time, or at least in England. And so some of these things were his ideas and some weren't. He also used a production line technique because he would wet the papers. Um, he would... Um, do like three or four of these at a time so that he'd have some wet and some ready to go and some to finish off. Um, he also would sketch and he'd have a, like a little sketch. Uh, I'm, I'm doing some research on this, a little sketch uh, booklet or, or a palette. And he would take a piece of paper and fold it in half and half again, and then just keep unfolding it with his sketches. He um, also, um, this picture that you said, or the painting you see here is actually done on blue. So it's blue oh. paper. He, um, this is what the color, this is his actual pa paper. I think he was famous enough that he started toning the papers himself, but he went to the company, a local company to, um, to make the paper for him. And see how it says it's gelatin sized. 
yes. he did that on purpose to be able to save the um uh, the base color so he could lift it up and get save those blue colors wow that gelatin does that so um he it, it was really interesting that he also somebody was talking about gouache he normally they say in watercolor not to use whites and you know all that my feeling is <laughs> just do it you know yeah. it, so he used he added a little wash to his paintings to be able to create the effects that he has nice because there's some of the paintings that he has at night i've been really interested in nighttime or evening just after dusk and that is almost impossible to capture yeah. and i believe I believe that that little bit of gouache in it is what's what is helping him. And I'm wondering also with the painting, like in the beginning, is that he may not, they, they said that he put washes on. So if you have a wet and wet wash, it's really difficult to come back and do something like this as a quick sketch. So I'm wondering if he didn't put some of these uh, like a base um, tonal wash on first, and then when he went out to sketch, that he sketched over or oh, went out to watercolor. Yeah, not all, not all of them, but I wonder if because he's doing this production line, he may be sitting out for a couple of days doing this. That he might always, he might be expecting on this is what the sky looks at this time. Yeah. Oh, so, nice. Oh, wow. So, amazing, oh, and, Carol. Thank you. And then one last thing. I have this article, again, for, uh, this is way above my uh, pay grade. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this has all the paints and lists the paints. And for you, he used a lot of handmade paints Ooh. and fugitive paints. Yes, so this he was has, so famous for that. He, this is the materials that he used from canvas to paint, but they list all the paints and their all kinds of information. They got all kinds of coding that was above nice. the you, um, <laughs> If you I have a send... link to that paper, that would be great. Put that in the chat or. Okay, I can Thank send you. that um, Word document if you want. It has all the links. Okay, oh. then I can I can put it, um, I will PDF it and put it on our landscape video page so people can download it. And the okay. other thing is, is there's three videos, which I have the link for. Oh, on send me those two. On the Tate, uh, t um, it's in England, the Tate Museum. Yep. And it's how to paint like uh, Turner. And he has three Ooh. different it's really, I, it's really interesting. He goes through uh, different techniques and everything. Ah, fantastic. So I'm Thank sorry you. to. <laughs> that was so rich. Thank you. I Afternoon. told you, I jumped in. I jumped in the deep end. <laughs> the deep end, yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, let's see, Sherry um, Andrick. Let's see, Spotlight. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Um, uh, decided to give a background that showed some clouds too. Yeah, that's um, great. To that last one, I, I haven't got, gone down quite so much of a rabbit hole on this, but from a very early age, I was introduced to Japanese woodblock prints. Mm -hmm. And so, and I've always had them around. And I think it's interesting to see how uh, skies are treated there. Um, if I could, share my okay let me share um, screen let and me I'll give see you can... share permission okay there we go yeah i oh, think wow. probably wow. many people are familiar with this hokusai um and of course i'm talking about the classic um 19th century uh, uh, the Japanese block prints. That's fabulous. Incredible. And that's and quite, it, you see how it, they car, he, literally the clouds are, it's negative um, uh, printing as it were. You can see where 
where you can really see the technique there. Right, in, ter in terms of leaving it. Mm -hmm. But it's, and, and it's just how it goes from the white at the bottom, mm -hmm. you know, to the blue at the top. Love that. Let's see. Oop. I've gotten a, I've gotten a thing here. There we go. Um, oh, but often, that. yeah, there's, you can see I have quite a few here. Can you see them? Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can get it any larger, but um, what am I doing? Oops, <laughs> I think Sorry. it's a different window. <laughs> I seem to have lost it, but once again, um, yeah, just the use of the, of the, the negative space. Um, and of course, I not only, uh, let's say I'm ready to stop the show, um, there's just so many examples. This is, this is some work that was perishing in the focus side. But also, um, see, I don't know if this is gonna, how this is gonna show up. Maybe I better, I better take off my- Yeah, if you don't take off the background, background it, will, it will get all squidgy. Yeah. <gasps> Look at that. Okay, so tilted- it um, rain. Tilted, uh, one, um, one, yeah, there you go. That got the glare off. Nice. Look at that. And oh in the rain, can, you can see the and, really that's the one. and the creation of the the creation of the the depth. And that's a block yeah. print, also. Yeah, that, that's also. Oh, wow, very um, good. But it's just so often when I do look at skies, that's what I. Nice. I, oh, I, I love, do, isn't it I wonderful to see? see. I, I love how everyone has, you know, different, different favorites. And it's, it's just so fascinating. Thank you so much. Sorry, I have a glee in the background. So I'll go, That's all right. go back. But, okay. but thank you. I don't have any, I don't have anything to, um, okay. To, no worries. To share of my own work. But. So Valerie Bears up next, and then we'll have Deirdre and then we'll wrap up after that. Valerie, you're on. Um, do you need to share screen? Oh, no, I don't. Okay. I'm, I didn't do my homework. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> want, I just want to share a couple things. All right. A couple things really quick. First of all, I'm like super proud of our no, local nature journaling group because we all made cyanometers one day. Yay! And, and, and I'm, so we did a session on making a cyanometer, which is a historic um, piece. So go look on our, on the, um, on the, the links I, I gave it, it. It was a, a, a a measurement, it was Saucier in front, uh, Switzerland, um, did this in the was set 1700s and Humboldt also used it on his voyages. And it was meant to measure uh, humidity by the color of the sky. It wasn't to paint the sky, it was to measure humidity, which is super cool. Oh, <laughs> that's a beautiful one, well done. Thank you, it was fun, it was really fun. Um, let's see. Also, thank you for shouting out about the conference. I got to tell you all, we are super stoked up here in Montana that um, Roseanne's going to come up and visit us for the weekend and do all kinds of marvelous teaching, but um, just had to put that out there. I'm so excited. Um, and Bethan, I don't know where you are here, but I, I, went, I wasn't writing fast enough. I wasn't able to catch your first quote that you shared. Oh, yeah. Let me have a look. Um... He said, uh, he described the sky as the chief organ of sentiment in a landscape. I'm going to put that in the chat. If somebody, Thank did you. anyone else do that? I can write that now. Okay. Actually, Bethan, if you could put, pop those quotes into the chat, that, that was amazing. Um, yeah. I'll do yeah. that now. Thank, Thank you, you Bethan, because those were just like fabulous. And I couldn't write fast enough. So I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> Thank you for taking on the note-taking task. That's wonderful. Thanks, Thank Valerie. You. Okay, thanks for that. Um, let's see, lower hand, and now I'll 
Deirdre, and then we're, I think we're, we're going to wrap up after Deirdre. Great. Right. So, I couldn't um, get the Padlet to come up on my laptop, but I did it on my phone. So if you can bring up, oh, okay. can bring up share me, that, you can see, I, yeah, I, I did a Rockwell Kent black and white, a different um, sort of print see. making technique. I'm looking here. Um, pen or, um, oh, there we go. Okay. Um, I'm clicking on it here and let me share my screen. Hold Thank on. Thank you. I'll have to figure out why it wouldn't work on my laptop. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, it's, who knows? Um, there we go. So, oh, nice. My goodness. I think I was thinking that had to be Moby Dick and indeed it, it is. is. It's from his Moby Dick series from the book. And I come from a photography background and I kind of like the black and white and mm -hmm. also printmaking. So I picked that one. It's got great water too. It does, boy, I imagine <laughs> the patience it took to get every line and stroke perfect to show the depth and the waves and that, wow. Fantastic. Yeah, th yeah. thanks for letting me share it. Okay. I love Thank that you. use of line to, to make the duck. It, that's really <laughs> exactly it's really something to play with. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Oh my goodness. So this was so much fun. Um, it really was. Everyone. Um, let's see. Um, Roseanne, I just, I, I hope this is okay that I share this, but I wanted to let people know. Um, oh, <laughs> um, the, at Roseanne uh, sells uh, different palettes. Oh, and cute. Has one called the Sky Palette. And and uh -huh. here's the the colors that are in it. Mm -hmm. So thank I, you, Deborah. Yeah, yes. those are fun. I, I, I didn't know I would try to keep those in stock. They're kind of hard to do, so they're on and off on stock. I think I have a few. Um, I'm going to be making more this weekend. I think. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, let's see. Um, I'm trying to switch views here. Um, how about if? Uh, we want to decide, um, Beth and Deborah. Um, we want to kind of have you guys put, I think in Padlet um, would be easier to, uh, oops, I just bombed the, hang on. <laughs> Apparently I can't talk and, 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 and click at the same time. There we go. Um, like, what are we going to do next time? And in, in March, uh, we'll have a meetup in March. And what would we like? Um, oh, yeah, if you haven't signed on until like, we put the Padlet link, let me put it in again. Because um, if, if you came on after you probably didn't see it. So um, here's the Padlet link. So ideas for what's up next. And I think we have a column in the Padlet. We do. For the ideas. It's um, not working for me. Hold on. My, hmm. is it all the way on the left? I think. Yes. Okay. No, I think it's the second column. Okay. So I just lost my Zoom. Hold on. There we are. Um, any ideas just off the top of our heads, just unmute and say to um, oh, fog. 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 I live fog. in San Francisco, so there's a lot of fog. <laughs> um, one idea would be like if we had, um, we picked a day or a day and a time and each mm -hmm. went out and did a sky scapito of whatever our sky in our home. Oh, oh that reminds me. I like that. Let me share with you. Um, Where Candy wasn't able to make it today, but I'm going to share. She sent me what she did. Thank you for reminding me. Um, I'm going to, she did a project with her granddaughter. Oh, wow. And it was uh, every day in February. They oh, painted what the sky looked like. That is awesome. So maybe it sounds like that's kind of what you were saying, um, Valerie, that's a, you know, or, it, you don't we, do it every day. Maybe you do it for three days. Maybe you do it for seven days. Or if we just pick a day and try to have a snapshot of across, everywhere and across the world, snapshot yeah. of what the sky Ooh, would be. Ooh, that would be fun. Then we could compile them in our yeah. spare time. I love that idea, Valerie. <laughs> oh, well, it'll be on Padlet. We put them all on Padlet and then like noon your time on such a date because otherwise oh. some people. 
arc, but maybe that would be good. I don't know. Ooh, I like that. So put, could you please write that? Somebody make sure we write that in the Padlet to capture that. Cause I really like that idea too. And if, <laughs> and if you then go to Padlet, you can vote on the different ideas. And then generally we just take the one where the most people were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you click the heart and. Uh, and do I think you, Jim uh, make sure to put the fog in uh, on it <laughs> okay. on Padlet also. Yay. Oh, these are fun. Kim, did you have an idea? I did. I wanted to find out if you had done clouds with reflections yet. Ooh, do you mean reflections on the clouds themselves or reflections, reflections on, on water, reflections on beaches, oh. reflections on things of clouds? I wondered if you had done so like shadows or I missed a couple of the sessions. Well, I'm out at the beach a lot and I see a lot of reflections and of the clouds and I'm fascinated by them. So um, <laughs> reflections in the water and shadows or Reflection just, in uh, the water, reflection uh, on the, yeah, on the surface, anything that's wet usually. Got it, got it. Yeah. Ooh, that's an interesting idea because we that's could use idea. that that technique. Who, who has seen um, using um, like a piece of glass with the black behind it? Oh. Um, to, oh, yeah, didn't you show us that? At, yeah, uh, yeah, it actually works. Um, let me show, yeah, um, let me show you real quick. Uh, of course, I'm not gonna be able to find it quickly, am I? Um, hang on. And I'll, I'll show you what, cause yes, the, this is one way to capture the reflection and be able to share it quickly here. Let me share my, no, I'm not gonna be able to. Oh, well, I'll put it on the Padlet because I can't find it right now and I'm just wasting time. So um, like I'll put that in the Padlet for how to how to use the uh, something to capture that. Cool. Well, well, the other thing is maybe gouache, but not everyone has gouache and I definitely don't want to do something that requires people to go and buy something, but that's another option. Or just white watercolor, maybe mixing that with your regular watercolor. But another thought I had was you could do um, a sky scapito as seen from space. You can get an image oh. from a line of, of clouds as seen from space and try doing that. Nice <laughs> ideas. Oh, I love all these ideas. We've got plenty to keep this going for months. Yay. I think the idea of doing a snapshot of, of clouds across the world on one particular day, we wouldn't be able to do it at the same moment because everybody's in different um, time zones and my day is a day ahead of your day. <laughs> and then night time usually, yeah. <laughs> hey, someone but, just called it space scapito. So. I love it. <laughs> oh. Hey, Jillian, thank you. Um, but maybe we can say like one particular date, one particular time, and then as the as we move into that date across the world, um, capture the sky. Is it spring on the twenty first or is it the twenty second? March twenty first equinox. Mary just wrote. Okay, should be around, but but that's not knowing. So for Bethan, that's that's yep. not spring. That's starting into <laughs> that's winter. True. Winter. Okay. Well. Which is fun. No, that that gives us a good sense. So we'll put that on Padlet and yeah. be sure to vote. You know, using the 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 little heart thing. Uh, how do you vote? Uh, oh, that's how you vote. Nice. And and if we don't do it, this I, the idea is this time. This gives us more for the future. So. Yeah, exactly. No, we we collect it. That's why Padlet's so nice because then we can go on and see, and and not have to go scroll through chats, which are really hard to read. Wonderful. Well, this was so fun. This everybody. is so, so fun. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you everyone uh, for coming. And um, oh, um, uh, if you didn't see the chat, uh, Panina um, reminded us you can um, use your phone turned off as a reflector. Oh, oh but what does that do? So, oh, oh, I see. So, so what, oops, ha, okay. so when your screen comes up. Love that you've yeah. got all these big cats on your screens. <laughs> <laughs> that's my little, that's my baby cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yay, thank you everyone i've got so many ideas now for people too. that i want to go and follow up and grab it all yeah. thank you valerie yeah amazing okay well <laughs> it, look for an email i'll get the recording up in a few days and um yeah i look forward to it. i think i'll see some of you tomorrow in the lake pigment workshop that i'm teaching uh how to make paint from plant parts.
Yeah. Oh. Which is super cool. It's, we're going to geek out. It's very science. It's actually pretty hard. So it's going to be fun. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you again. Have a great weekend. Awesome.